There we go. Oh. What up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, I always try and give out my game balls, win or lose, after a game. The Cowboys had a bye week, <clears throat> and for some reason, I, I, I said this earlier, <clears throat> I felt like we were watching the Jason Garrett Dallas Cowboys. All week long, I've been having this funny feeling about the Green Bay Packers. The Green Bay Packers and um, how Aaron Rodgers has owned us. I think he's 8-2 and two versus the Dallas Cowboys in his career. He's like Tom freaking Brady. It is literally our kryptonite. But... It wasn't so much Aaron Rodgers as much as I have questions here. I, I, I'm wondering something. Now, now, Micah Parsons alluded to he's got some injuries, but he's not looking for excuses. You know, you, you, he's like basically everybody's got ailments. Everybody is nicked up. Everybody has is, is, is got problems. And I said that to, to Brother Roz. I said, Roz, after the game, I said, Micah does not look right. You saw him kind of limping going off the sidelines, and I believe that the injuries are worse than what we're led on to be. You know, typically, if somebody knows you're injured, they're going to be, of course, looking for that injury to try and, you know, give a little push a little bit right there to try and slow you down. Um, and I think he's got some, some issues there. But he alluded to that some tonight. But... I'm trying to understand a couple of things that we did that don't make sense to me. I remember talking with Micah Parsons' dad um, in an interview there in the off season, and we were talking about if it was better off for him to be a linebacker or to be an edge rusher. Edge rusher is where he was thriving at last year, and he was thriving at this year. I don't want to see Micah Parsons in coverage. I don't want to see Micah Parsons at middle linebacker. I need Micah Parsons getting Aaron Rodgers off the block, and I'm trying to understand how come so many times. Now, I get it. Early on, we saw Van Der Esch go down. You know, must have gotten a, a stinger in the elbow, but came back. And Van Der Esch, um, you love Van Der Esch, but Van Der Esch is slow and has got Jalen Smith-itis where he's getting carried down the field. A lot of the yards that you saw the Green Packers make on the ground were yards after contact. I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I guarantee you that you're hitting them two yards up the field, and they're going for another four or five yards. We can't seem to stop them, and that was our Achilles heel last year. Now, there's, you know, everybody wants to kill Dak. Dak had two bad interceptions. I will give you that, although there's some question was, were the receivers where they were supposed to be? Be that as it may. We went into the fourth quarter with a 28 to 14 lead, and we gave up 170 yards to Aaron Rodgers, a team that was literally on life support. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. And I'm also wondering how it is that we kept throwing the ball as much as we did when. We don't have the horses against the defense that has been suspect against the run, where we were actually having Tony Pollard making gains. Our, our, we were Dak Prescott even. I mean, Dak, what, four times we went for it on short yardage, and Dak Prescott did a Zeke Elliott imp imitation. I, I have questions there. And then, you know, people are going to say, oh, you're just making excuses. Well, okay, you lost the game. There's always reasons why you lost. We still got hosed by the officials again. Sorry. Sorry, in that last drive that we had. The holding that they called was less holding than what the cornerback had on our receiver 
on fourth down. It's bullshit. And you all know it. Don't don't lie. You all know it that that was some bullshit ass calls that saved Aaron freaking Rodgers. So some of this blame has to go on Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore, you know, sometimes he will call the perfect freaking drive. And you'll go, okay, Kellen Moore has got it. And then you'll look and you'll really like, was that the same guy calling plays? What the hell's going on? Now, our backs are against the wall now. Giants, right now, they're in second place. We're in third place. We just dropped down in the playoff standings. Now we got to place Minnesota this week coming up. That are playing pretty good right now. Just beat Buffalo. And if we play like we did today, Kirk Cousins will embarrass us. Kirk Cousins will embarrass us. Okay. Okay. I will say there were some things as hard as it is to find. We were able to run the football. Shout out to Tony Pollard for getting over 100 yards and doing some damage. That was incredible, and that will go a long ways, especially with Zeke Elliott still on the men. Missed Zeke Elliott. I think Zeke could have been getting some of those tough yards. Tony Pollard, if there's a gap, a seam, he's going to go through it. But if he's got to push the pile, he, he's not that guy. But let me also give him a shout-out because on one of those fourth downs where Dak was running, he literally – push Dak's ass to push him across to get the first down. So shout out to him. Tony Pollard was a beast. And shout out to C.D. Lamb, who finally got over that 100 yards, first time this season, had a couple of touchdown catches, and looked like for once a number one. But he needs help. He truly needs some help. Yeah. Let me also say, D-Law, who against the Bears, kept hitting too much inside, and Justin Fields kept getting outside of him. D-Law actually played decent. He got penetration a lot. He's actually got the uh, cause to fumble in there and gave us some opportunities. Got to give him a game ball. Beyond that, it's kind of hard. Let me say the offensive line, although we got some ticky-tack penalties, the offensive line opened up holes. The problem for the offensive line was they kept trying to throw the ball too much instead of running the damn football. And this is where you go crazy because, you know, that drive – that we had before the half, after we went down 14-7, to seven, that drive before the half that we went down in a minute and 40 and score a touchdown and all of a sudden make it 14-14 was like a, the perfect drive. And you felt like, okay, we got this shit together. Now, I'm not going to go completely ballistic on this. The trolls are having a ball right now with the Cowboys, but this is the thing about football. There's no rhyme or reason to it. You're going to have good games and bad games. The Cowboys traditionally have not been good after bye weeks, and I don't understand why. When we've been the number one seed in the playoffs and we've had the bye weeks, we always seem to lose those games. seems like when we come off the bye week during the season, we don't do well. And so now... Maybe the Cowboys got too full of themselves. Maybe the Cowboys started believing the hype 
that everybody was talking about. They're a top five team. They're, you know, the biggest threat to the Eagles, that they're a Super Bowl favorite. Throw that shit out the window. Throw it out the window. Cowboys, take it out your mind. Right now, your Super Bowl is playing next week against the Minnesota Vikings. That's the only thing we, as well as the Dallas Cowboys, need to be thinking about. Is the Minnesota Vikings in one week from today. That's it. Let's stop getting ahead of ourselves. We got a lot of work to do. I know y'all out there are going to say, oh, Dak sucks, man. Screw Dak. You know, two interceptions. He lost the game. Well, I will say having those two interceptions early and writing the ship and then leading him on to three more touchdowns was at least redemption in there. Dak didn't play good. Defense didn't play good. The team didn't play good. And you win as a team and you lose as a team. And if you don't understand that, if you don't think 170 yards given up in the fourth quarter that the team should win, well, I, there's no point in me talking to you. But we got to do better at stopping the run. And this is truly our Achilles heel that we just gave up another 200 yards on the ground. It's hard to win when you let a team control the clock and end up running down your throat. We got to fix that shit. Or we got to jump out to big leads and hold on to them. Either way, at this moment, we're not doing either. So, that's all I have for you. Trolls, have at it. I know you're going to be living here the next few days. Tomorrow night, we've got the Commanders versus the Eagles. And um, we'll be live streaming that. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. Make sure you tell the people you love, you love them. Because you might not get the chance again. And I love you guys. And God willing, I'll see you in the morning.